Happy Molina Monday. Last week, I covered how exactly the Silicon Valley bank collapse is going to impact real estate. Since then, Credit Suisse, which is two and a half times larger than Silicon Valley Bank, collapsed. And I'm going to cover today exactly how the Credit Suisse bank collapse is going to impact real estate. It's been one of the most active weeks in finance since COVID, and it's been a historical week as well. So I'm going to get you caught up on what exactly is going on. So in response to the Silicon Valley bank collapse and the worry and the fear of these bank runs and the contagion spreading to other banks and having other banks in the United States collapse as well, led last week, late last week, to the Fed releasing what's called the bank term funding program. And that's essentially a backstop of liquidity alone between a 5 to 6% interest rate that all the small banks in America can take out in order to protect themselves from a bank run. All right. Now, what you have to know is that last week, we added $300 billion with a B to our balance sheet, even though the Fed was trying to hike rates in order to tighten the balance sheet. They did the exact opposite last week. In fact, JP Morgan thinks that the federal bank term funding program is a backstop up to $2 trillion. $2 trillion. Now, the Fed did not exactly say how much the bank term funding program is allowed to go up to. However, the reason why JP Morgan thinks this is because the Fed, if you look at all the all the non-FDIC insured deposits in all the small banks, excluding the big five, that quantity is $2 trillion, all right? And in the bank term funding program, the Fed did say that each bank can take out the loan up to about $95 billion, and the Fed is leveraging that to the maximum, which is 18 to 20 times, 18 to 20 times leverage, which is exactly $2 trillion. And since $300 billion was taken out just last week alone, and the bank term funding program lasts till March 2024, $2 trillion is actually a pretty conservative estimate. All right. So in case you didn't think that $7 trillion was enough, all right, <laughs> that we printed in COVID, now we have a potential $2 trillion that might be added to the balance sheet. All right. So it's very important to pay attention. Now, how in the world does this correlate to real estate? Well, as the saying goes, whenever the Fed hits the brakes, you can guarantee that someone is going to go through the window. You just never know who it was. Now, if we look at 2001, what happened, ladies and gentlemen, in 2001? We had a really hot economy. Here's the S&P 500. Really hot economy uh, that basically started in 98 and at 99, which is really on fire. And Alan Greenspan decided to raise the federal funds rate because he thought the economy was getting a little bit out of control, just like it was thanks to stimulus during COVID with the stock market getting out, out of control. That's why Jerome Powell began to raise the federal funds rate. But Alan Greenspan did it very fast. So did Jerome Powell. Within nine months, um, interest rates raised by 400 basis points. Now that really affects banks in a big way, very, very big way. Side note, this is not a good time to get a mortgage through a bank. It's a great time to get a mortgage through a mortgage broker like me because we have several hundreds of options. Whereas a bank might stop lending mortgages. Uh, we're always going to be able to find investors with the best rate out there. But anyways, back to the story. So 2001 is a very similar time today because who went through the windshield in 2001? It was the tech industry. Right now, it's half tech, half banking. They're both going through the windshield. But what's very important to note is that when the Fed began to raise the federal funds rate, that's when the S&P 500, that's when the stock market in 2000, in 2001, started to tank. And ladies and gentlemen, it was not a flash crash like it was during COVID in 2000. I'm um, sorry, in 2020, it was a two to three year crash in the S&P 500, okay? Now, what happened during that same exact time? Well, this is the S&P 500 chart. Here is a chart of 30-year mortgage rates. And as the S&P 500 began to slide down for three years, so did mortgage rates. Mortgage rates went from 8.5% in May of 2000 
all the way down to 6.4% by November of 2001. Now, what happened in the real estate market? What happened in the real estate market during that same time period? Well, real estate actually went up about 16% during that time period, ladies and gentlemen. So while the stock market was plummeting, real estate was actually a safe haven. It was very, very stable. Now, why do I bring that up? Why do I bring that up? Because let's look at how real estate in the United States is doing. And I've been telling everybody, listen, real estate has decelerated across the entire country. It's going to flatten, okay? But where do you want to invest in? Where do you want to park your money? You want to invest in the Sun Belt in Florida, ladies and gentlemen. So United States, on a year-over-year -year basis, real estate is only down 1.2% over the whole entire country. 1.2%. Let's look at Florida, however. Florida, 4.9% up. Up 4.9% year-over-year. But let's break that down because I've been specifically telling you about the advantages of South Florida. All right, West Palm Beach up 9.4%. Boca Raton up 11.2%. Wellington up 12.7%. Royal Palm Beach, these are crazy numbers in Royal Palm Beach. It's up 29% year over year. Jupiter up only 1% because Jupiter has a lot of higher priced homes as well. So up only 1%. All right, Palm Beach Gardens, 5.8%. Now, let's compare that to if you had your money in the stock market, the S&P 500, year over year, it's down 11%. Let's break that down further. The NASDAQ composite, down 15% in the stock market. But hey, what about these FANG companies, Facebook, Apple, uh, Netflix, Google? All right, we take the FANG companies, the, the that companies that are usually the best performing tech companies, Year over year, down 11%, the best companies in the world. Google, down 25% year over year. Amazon, down 39%, almost 40% year over year. And here we are in Florida, we're up 4.9%. And that's the same exact thing that we saw in 2000 to 2002. The same exact thing. So now let's go back to Credit Suisse. What's going to happen? Investors are going to keep taking their money out of the stock market and they're going to look to long-term bonds as protection. They're going to look at the safe haven asset classes such as real estate because you have a cash flow component. It's real. You can touch it. It does really well during recessions. In fact, out of the past nine recessions, real estate either plateaued or went up in eight of them. The only outlier was 2008, which was a subprime mortgage collapse thanks to mortgages that were illegal as of 2010. The Dodd-Frank Act made those mortgages illegal. So now credit risk is very low. I've been talking about the fact that default rates are at a 23-year low. All right. And inventory is also at a historic low. Even in 2001, when real estate was performing well, you had twice the amount of inventory in 2001. We're in a very, very low inventory market. All right. So, where do you want to be investing in, ladies and gentlemen? You want to be investing in the Sun Belt. But, particularly, what's really interesting, I love Redfin data. It actually shows you exactly uh, where people are moving to in the United States and where they are fleeing from. So West Palm, which is where I own my triplex in, for example, people that are moving to West Palm, they're from New York, they're from Washington, Boston, Chicago, Los Angeles, Philadelphia, San Francisco, Seattle, Washington, San Diego. What do you really see here? Okay, New York. Okay, one of the top four cities, highest concentration of tech startups and tech companies. Same with Washington, Boston, uh, anywhere in California as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, listen, you get the picture. You don't want your money in the stock market right now. You want your money working for you in real estate, particularly in the Sun Belt. You need anything at all, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to keep you posted. Give me a call anytime. You have any questions, 561 801 0260. Have a great day. Molina out.